Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sebastian Linder. I'm the maker of this film, uh, Loving Lanka. Um, yeah, you had a lot of questions, so I uh, decided to make a making of and um, to include some of what happened. So, last October I was full of jobs. I was full until here with agency work, films I did for, uh, yeah, commercial films. And I just had to get out. I just married my girl and uh, we headed out for Sri Lanka for three months. And I can really recommend that. If you want to improve yourself in something, just go out and just do what you love for some time. And yeah, so we were in Sri Lanka and I had the idea to make something with time, to play with time and space. So um, to do that, I was really inspired by the Watchtower of Turkey um, uh, movie. You probably all know because it's one of Vimeo's best. And um, um, I really liked the approach that because I saw that I could do more in the edit. I could do more in my films when I have the possibility to fly around with hyperlapses, invisible cuts and to not only cut but um, use the eyes of the viewer to maneuver it like in a tunnel through the picture and to combine that with the idea of time that we are always puppets of our past that we always say oh we are pure poor people and this and this happened in my past and I cannot get over it is what determines very often our life but we should live in the moment and that's what we did in Sri Lanka. So I wanted to put this in the movie. And to do this, I took the camera with me. This is a GH4 with what I filmed like most of the dynamic shots. And um, so a lot of people asked me, did you do the, um, like the pans and the transitions in post or after effects with blur and something? No, I just filmed them in a way that I can cut them. And like, because I already knew I will probably do a lot of things reversed, I always went into the shot like this. Then when I had the shot, which not happened very often because a lot of coincidental things had to come together, I went into a good framing, but the light had to be perfect. There would be have to, uh, to be some movement uh, in, the, in the image, um, which provides also like in the camera movement or which supports the camera movement. And then when I have the moment, I would pan out, I would turn the camera and all handheld, all handheld, nothing like with a dolly, no Ronin, no nothing, just handheld. And yeah, so a lot of people also asked, how do you do the camera rotation? How did you do it in After Effects? I didn't do it in After Effects. I just take the camera and turn it. If you watch the Revenge of the Beast, where we do a 360 camera movement out of the wrist with a skateboard together, you know that it's possible. You can do it with a hand. And that's also much more fun. Yeah, for the hyperlapse, also GH4. Um, I didn't use this lens, I used the fish eye lens. And yeah, we're just walking around like this. I mean, you take a photo, you take one step, you take a photo, you take one step and hold the pa camera uh, par parallel to the horizon and just do it for hours and years and you will have a lot of cool time lapse. I mean, I filmed about, I think, 60 hours of material, which is uh, yeah, kind of a lot for a three minute movie, but I needed it. So let's look in the selection. Uh, for example, here we have all the interesting moves. That's why it's called interest moves. And if I play, there are so many uh, shots you don't know, um, but they are cool still. And uh, a lot of them I didn't use. So when I selected just the interesting moves where I had a lot of interesting moments and moves and so I had about, oh, let me scroll, oh, 50 minutes, 55, one hour, one hour and five, one hour and 10, one hour and 15, one hour and 20. Okay, one hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> that's a lot. And that's just one sequence from interesting moves. I also have this for animals and other things um, like invisible cut mo moments and so, so it was way too much. So what I did is um, pretty, unorthodox for my workflow because mm. normally I have a music and I start editing out of my selection to it but this time I did it differently and I worked on the time remaps in the inverse direction 
because I had to see how it works. And you know, if, if there's an inverse motion, it normally looks very strange. So I time remapped every shot that it looks normal to the gravitation we know. Yeah. So just have a look here, and it's a reverse mo motion, but look, it looks very natural. And then he runs. And you see, just like from the selection alone, I put the scenes after each other and already um, edited them in a way that I can use them. <laughs> so, yeah. And um, yeah, of course, I didn't do it alone. Um, I had some friends helping me, which is always great. So I'm Stefan Kronis. I did the color grading for Loving Lanka. And um, because that Bastian is a good friend of mine, I said, OK, I'm going to do it. And uh, I know he's kind of a crazy guy. And after 10 times saying that he has the final version of the edit, I finally got the one of the final versions. So starting here with the beautiful sunset and then scrolling frame by frame, picture by picture. Yeah, and this is, um, yeah, if you, you know, you've seen the invisible cuts and then this way you don't know how many cuts are in there. Now you see how many cuts are in because I had to create them. <laughs> uh. So um, what I think is also very great, when I edited the movie, I always thought of it that is, it is like a dance. It's a three and a half minute dance. And if you see a performance of a dancer, um, you don't want to get bored. You want to have some innovative move, some, some humor, something in there. Like in every second there should be something new. So when I edited this, I, I always thought like, which idea could I bring in the next second to make some surprise, to make some cool thing? What, what could we do in the sound? What could we do in the image? And what could we do in the movement of the, of the image? How can we always do something? And if you have a dance, I think like, I always thought of movements like Okay, that was embarrassing. But yeah, that, that's really how I thought. Sometimes I was just sitting there like, and I'm giving it all. Like that was like, I get the, the, the editing in, into yeah. motion. Hello, yeah. uh, my name is Bonnie Stolf and I'm the sound designer of uh, Loving Lanka. And that's it. That's the big uh, Pro Tools project with uh, many, many sounds. Countless sounds, uh, maybe about 600. That's very, very big. And why, why I use so many sounds? Because I want to create this big, wide uh, feeling, warm feeling, organic feeling. And Sebastian came in April up with this idea about the film, about changing time, playing rivers. And I saw my old tape machine in the studio and say, wow, that's perfect for them. Because I played uh, some music reversed on the tape machine and record them uh, with my computer and put them here for, for the ski moment. <laughs> you can uh, hear now one moment. I have to search. It's not, it's not so easy to search here. And <laughs> in this project for the ski moment, here's the ski moment. Wow, so, and here's the tape machine sound. <laughs> and that's it, it's uh, not correct with any plugins, it's only the on analog sound I put here to create this uh, backward feeling. For example, this uh, monk here, uh, which was 
pretty important for uh, Sebastian. He wanted to, to have this picture really clear and um, focused and full of life basically uh, in the frame. So if we have a look at the original footage, which is really flat um, from, I can do it bigger. Amazing. <laughs> it's raw, so you get all the information back. Yeah, the girls, the portraits. Uh, this is what the thumbnail on Vimeo is. Oh. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> Girlfriends before, girlfriends after. Before and after. Boom! Can someone turn on the light, please? And here we go. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of people ask for technique and uh, how do you make this and how do you make this, but this is for me not important. I'm not the best technician, like, in any discipline, I think. But I think, like, using the technique for the right narration is what is very, very important. And um, so I always had a concept and I will tell you like I would show you the first seconds and, and tell you what I had in mind to convince the audience of what I found out with time and space. So let's have a look. So we begin and we go into this mysterious world and then we have the mosquito. The mosquito cannot get into the light like one dimension cannot get into the light doesn't understand that he cannot go through. Ooh. We have the turning thing turning of time. Time comes. From the past, through the present, or on into the future. And here, the monks are here for the first time. I love the monks. And they are sitting there like, you cannot get in here. This is, this is, we, we are the protectors of time and space. And that carries along with it another impression, which is to say that life moves from the past to the future in such a way and here we have the first time, like the turning of the camera, we turn, we turn the whole thing around, we think the other way around. And still, we always have people like who look into the distance, thinking about like the past, because they are, they are caught by, like, by the past and they cannot get out. And the animals, they're like scared, they're like, oh, fuck, who's there? Yeah, they are also like small animals. And I love this picture because it totally gets like a facet of all the such shots um, who were before. Like the guy sitting there cannot do anything. The elephant is so big and he's just very small sitting there. The elephant swings through his head and he's just looking to the distance because he cannot do anything. Like the dog, cannot do anything. Small. And then we have the monk. He's like, I can show you the way. <laughs> And now we have a lot of images where uh, people are small and other things are big. Yeah, now it gets sick. <laughs> With a lot of nice edits, we turn it around and we fight. We fight against time and space. Yeah. I really like this cut, like, invisible cut, no, it goes back, and then it's invisible cut. <laughs> yeah, turning of the camera, always turning, 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 because we, are, we, are, we always turn time. Turning is like the, the perfect um, metaphor for uh, time. Go back and forth, because... It's not so easy to go back in time. Yeah, and then we go back. Yeah, and that was fun to do this forth and back. That was, that was pretty cool. I searched like all my material, tried it with it. You just take like two, three frames, forth, back, and um, sometimes it works. You have to stabilize it. Yeah, there are some tricks to it. You will find out. Of course, I did so many uh, like scenes with back and forth. It was very funny. I, I really loved a lot of terms. I love that ape. He was great too. I love the dog. <laughs> yeah, so I tried a lot I, with, with all the footage, with all kind of speeds. And uh, yeah, it was funny times. I, I, that was really fun to do it. 
Oh yeah, that, that's also nice. <laughs> oh man, if you would know how, how many thousands of shots I still have, which are so great and are not in the movie, it's, 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 it's really a pain when I look through the material. It's like, oh no, it will never be in the movie. I gave it all for that shot, it's not in the movie. But yeah, that's it, kill your darlings, that's always good. The really great thing uh, between Sebastian and me is that we are playing always a ping pong game in the post. That means um, Sebastian came up with a roof cut. I started to search for sounds, uh, collect sounds, make the sound design, send him back and he said, wow, now I have more and more ideas for, for editing. Uh, he uh, makes that the uh, editing fits more together with the sound design, synchronize them better, change uh, cuts and everything, send me the next cut, I edit the sound design and again and again and again and that's a very creatively way to work on a film because uh, the sound depends on the film and the other way around and that's the way why it's so good. and more other information on my blog. So, 60 hours of material into a three and a half movie film. <laughs> Here it is, Loving Lanka. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I like to work on a film so long that in the end you say, I could not do it any better. I think that was some, that someone of the Vimeo staff wrote this. Uh, it, it, it has it all and I said, I gave it all. <laughs> I cannot do more than that now I think. I have to go out now and do some other stuff. <laughs> After, because you have such a nice travel experience, but then in the end you're just sitting in a room and editing, editing, editing to get this out to, to convince the feeling. And that, that is the thing, like I traveled three months for this and had so many great experience and to convince somebody how great it was in three and a half minutes, you have to put all this time, all this craft in so that in the end, in three and a half minutes, you get the same feeling to everybody out there who wasn't on the journey with me or with us. So um, yeah, and thanks to all of you. Thanks for sharing the video. Thanks to Vimeo for giving us such a great platform, sharing it, uh, supporting filmmakers. I'm very happy to be here with this great movie. And yeah, um, thank you. Once again, you will see the other. The man, the woman that you love.